Jack wondered very much. He had never heard of or seen this castle before. But when he reflected on the subject, he saw that it was very much separated from the village by the perpendicular rock on which it stood, as if it were in another land. But while Jack was looking at the castle, a very strange-looking woman came out of the woods and walked towards him. She wore a pointed cap made of quilted red satin and lined with fur. Her hair flowed loosely down her shoulders, and she walked with a staff. Jack took off his cap and bowed to the woman. "'If you please, ma'am, said Jack, "'is this your house?' "'No,' said the elderly lady. "'Listen carefully, and I will tell you the story of that castle. "'Once upon a time there was a noble knight who lived in this castle, "'which is on the borders of Fairyland. "'He had a fair and beloved wife and very lovely children, "'and as his neighbours, the little people, were very friendly to him, they bestowed upon him many excellent and precious gifts. Rumours whispered of their treasures, and a monstrous giant who lived not far away, who was a very wicked being, decided he would obtain the possessions for himself. So he bribed a false servant to let him into the castle when the knight was in bed and asleep. Unfortunately, the knight and his older children were never seen again after that night. Luckily for her, the lady was not harmed, as she and her infant son, who was only two or three months old, had left the castle to visit her old nurse, who lived in the valley. She had been stuck there all night due to a storm. The next morning, as soon as it was light, one of the servants from the castle who had managed to escape came to tell the poor lady the sad fate of her husband and her pretty babes. She could hardly believe him at first and was eager at once to go back and share the fate of her dear ones. The old nurse, with many tears, reminded her she still had an infant child, and it was her duty to preserve her life for the sake of the poor innocent babe. The lady yielded to this reasoning, and agreed to remain at her nurse's house, as it was the best place of hiding, for the servant told her that the giant had vowed if he could find her, both her and her infant would suffer the same fate as the rest of her family. Years rolled on. The old nurse passed away from age, leaving her cottage and a few articles of furniture it contained to the poor lady who dwelt in it, working as a peasant for her daily bread. Her spinning wheel and the milk of her cow, which she had purchased with the little money she had with her, helped provide for her and her little son. There was a nice little garden attached to the cottage in which they cultivated peas and beans and cabbages, and the lady was not ashamed to go out at harvest time. She worked in the field to supply for her little son's wants. Jack, that poor lady is your mother. This castle was once your father's, and it must once again be yours. Jack uttered a cry of surprise. My mother... Oh, madame, what should I do? My poor father, my dear mother! Your duty requires you to win it back for your mother, but the task is a very difficult one and full of peril, Jack. Have you got the courage to undertake it? I fear nothing when I am doing right, said Jack. Then, said the lady in the red cap, you are to slay the giants. You must get into the castle, and if possible, Capture the hen that lays golden eggs, and a harp that talks. Remember, all the giant possesses is really yours. And she finished speaking suddenly. The lady in the red hat disappeared, and of course, Jack knew she must have been a fairy. Jack was determined at once to attempt the adventure, so he advanced and blew the horn which hung on the castle portal. The door was opened in a minute or two by a frightful giantess with one great eye in the middle of her forehead. As soon as Jack saw her, he turned to run away, but she caught him and dragged him into the castle. Ho, ho, she cried terribly. You didn't expect to see me here. That is clear. No, I shan't let you go again. I am bored of my life and I am so overworked. I don't see why I shouldn't have a servant just like the other ladies. And you shall be my boy. You shall clean the knives and shine the boots and make the fires and help me gently. 
but only when the giant is out. When he is at home, I must hide you, for he has eaten up all my prior servants, and you would be a dainty morsel, my little lad. While she spoke, she dragged Jack right into the castle. And the poor boy was very frightened, as I'm sure you and I would have been in his place. But he remembered that fear would not help him, so he struggled to be brave and tried to make the best of things. I am quite ready to help you, and do all I can to serve you, madam, he said. Only I beg you will be good enough to hide me from your husband, for I should not like to be eaten at all. That's a good boy, said the giantess, nodding her head. It is lucky for you you did not scream out when you saw me, as the other boys who I brought in here did. For if you had done so, my husband would have been awakened and he would have eaten you, as he did them for breakfast. Come here, child. Go into my wardrobe. He never ventures to open that. You shall be safe there. And she opened a huge wardrobe which stood in the great hall and shut Jack into it. But the keyhole was so large it allowed him plenty of air, and he could see everything that took place through it. Soon he heard heavy footfalls on the stairs, and like the lumbering along of a great cannon, a voice like thunder cried out, Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Let him be alive or let him be dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Wife! cried the giant. There is a man in the castle. Let me have him for breakfast. You are grown old and stupid, cried the lady in her loud tones. It is only a nice fresh stick of an elephant that I have cooked for you which you smell. There, sit down and make a good breakfast. And she placed a huge dish in front of him, full of savoury steaming meat, which greatly pleased him and made him forget his idea of an Englishman being in the castle. When he had finished his breakfast, he went out for a walk, and then the giantess opened the door and made Jack come out to help her. He helped her all day, she fed him well, and when the evening came, she put him back in the wardrobe. The giant came in to eat his supper, and Jack watched him through the keyhole and was amazed to see him use a wolf's bone as a fork and put half a chicken at a time into his massive mouth. When supper had ended, he bade his wife to bring him his hen that laid the golden eggs. It lays as well as it did when it belonged to that paltry knight. Indeed, I think the eggs are heavier than ever. 